Can we just be silent? Worship the Lord with our quietness. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let the whole earth silence before Him. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, awesome and glorious God. Be exalted, Jehovah. Can you just wave your two hands unto the Lord? And I want you to say something to God this night. In appreciation of His grace. In appreciation of His love. In appreciation of His mercy. In appreciation of his faithfulness, just go ahead, appreciate the Lord, glorify the Lord, exalt his holy name, honor the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Our God is a faithful God, is a mighty God, is an awesome God. Great is the Lord, mighty is our God, faithful is our God. Just wave unto the Lord, think about his goodness, think about his faithfulness. Think about his law. Think about his power. And give glory unto the most high. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Iliba boza taka rukus koto ponte poli ba lakra kanda kala bara boro boto tere ma. Iliba boza teke ke 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 yete kush koto poli ba la. Indere ke ke likra kara kara kari bo zuku koto poli ba la. Eli momo zata kakus koto kunto koli ba lindre kus kete poli ba la. Thank you, blessed Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship, we praise your name. Forever and ever, may your name and your name alone be lifted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Hear the word of the Lord. He said, my hand that is underneath is taking you from the valley of confusion. He said, I will not stop lifting you until I have taken you to the topmost top. Hear the word of the Lord. As long as you profess your love for me, my love will continue to manifest towards you. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you glory. Forever may your name and your name alone be praised. We bow, we worship you this night. Because all power belongs to you. We have seen the manifestation of your power before. Lord, we expect a higher dimension of your power tonight. Yes. Father, touch this congregation Amen. and everyone that is part of this service with the hands of your power. Amen. Lord, you are the mover of men. Move each one from where we are to where we're supposed to be in time and destiny. Amen. To the glory and to the praise of your name. Thank you, Abba Father. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And the people of God will say a good amen. amen. Let the people of God say a good amen. amen. Let me hear you praise the Lord. Let me hear you praise the Lord. God bless you. Please take your seat. I want to appreciate 
the opportunity of being part of this great program. And I want to thank our able leader, the father in this region, for the hand of love and fellowship uh, they have extended to us, and the family of Champion Cathedral for the love that has been shown unto me. I believe God with you that where God has the sin to take you, you will get there and you will go beyond. In the name of Jesus. Now go open with me to the book of Judges chapter 18. I'll be reading verse 9 to 10. Judges chapter 18. I'll be reading verse 9 to 10. And they say, Arise that we may go up against them. For we have seen the land, and behold, it is very, very good. And are ye still be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. Then verse 10, when ye go, Ye shall come unto a people secure and to a large land. For God has given it unto your hands. A place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. If you look at this passage of the scriptures, a number of things call for attention in the place. First is the challenge, arise. Because if you say we move, you don't sit down and continue to say we move. And arise is not just for someone who is sitting. Whether you are sleeping, whether you are lying down, whether you are sitting, even when you are standing, arise is applicable to you because it's a call to action. In other words, it is time to do something. He said, let's go against them. You know, you know, talking about the, the inhabitants of the promised land. If God is moving you into the place, because life does not permit vacuum, there are people that are occupying the place. And as long as you are not there, they continue to enjoy the blessing and the benefit of the place. As long as you slow and slack your hand, they continue to take, take charge in the place. But as soon as you arise and take your rightful place, those who are occupying your space will vacate the place for you. I am believing God with somebody tonight. Every power occupying your space, they will, they will vacate today in the name of Jesus. He said, for we have seen the land. For we have seen the land. One thing that prompts action is what you see. Until a man see, he may be slow, sluggish, and reluctant. But as soon as you have seen, you are convinced. As soon as you have seen, you know, you, you, it, it becomes reality. As soon as you, are, you can see, it becomes, you know, something that is applicable and can be re reckoned to. We talk about we move, we move, we move. To a number of people, it is just a mere slogan. Now, there is a need for you to see. Now, until you see it, you can't possess it. But may you see it. And may you possess it. May the Lord open your eyes to see where God has ordained for you to be. And may you occupy the space in the mighty name of Jesus. And then when he said, we have seen the land, he said, behold, it is very good. In other words, compared to what you have, compared to where you are, there is something that is very good. I'm sure it was a short of English word. Good. You know, uh, excellent. Supposed to be. But they put very you know, at their own time. Now, it is far, far better than what you can ever imagine. And there is a place you cannot even fathom. How great, how glorious, how beautiful it is. Until you can see it. Until you can see, perceive it. 
you won't be able to go in. And then there came another challenge. Are you still? In the New King James, are you doing nothing about it? Are you not taking action? Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. In other words, the land is waiting for your occupation. If you take it, then you enjoy it. But if you don't, it remains there in the hands of others. But the, the strength of the Almighty that will enable you to take your space and occupy your territory, today God will grant unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Then in verse 10 he said, When you go, go you shall come to a people secure. There is a level of people, men, congregation. There is a move and a shift from one place onto the other. There is a, going to be a change of location. There's going to be a change of environment. There's going to be a change of atmosphere. You know, because you are moving, you are changing class. You are changing level. You are changing, you know, height, uh, altitude. So somewhere very great to the place of comfort and convenience. He said you are going to the midst of people secure. Those who are not terrified. Those who are not threatened by anything. Those who are not moved by circumstances and situations of time. Those who are always in charge and in control. And I could see from this congregation, God is raising new set of men and women who will be secure throughout the rest of their life. They will take charge in every sphere and every areas of life. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. If you are one of them, let me hear you say good amen. amen. He said, and to a, a, a large land, expansion, increase, multiplication, enlargement of course. Uh, your, your tent is going to be shifted. It's going to be enlarged to the left, to the right, forward, backward, and then your capacity is going to be increased to receive more. I am believing God. God is giving you new capacity. In this program, there is a new capacity coming for you, coming unto you, coming over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you believe it, let your amen be better. He said it is a place where there is no want of anything that is in the air. There is a place that God is taking you to. So when we say we move, it is to now begin to get the faint idea where we are moving to. Because when we say we move, it is a relocation from one part to a different side. Now where are you moving to? Into a large and into a good land. Into a place that is secure. Into a place that is very beautiful. Into an excellent environment. Into the place where you will want or lack nothing on earth. And if there is a place that God is taking you to. He said it is a place where you will want nothing. You are entirely complete wanting nothing. That is the place God is moving you to. You will get there. You will reach there. You will settle there. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. See, life is seen by many different people in a different ways. For a, num a number of people, life is seen as a, as a game. And so, they play and gamble. And uh, most of the time, they lose in life. And everything about them is just about, let me try, let me try my luck. But life is not about luck. It is about blessing. It is about connecting with the grace and the power of the Most High. And because many thought it is just a, 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 a game, you know, when they play and they don't win, you know, they begin to look for, you know, other means of getting along in life. But life is not a play. For other, life is a race. And so they continue to run. It is running and running and running and trying to outrun others. Try, you know, uh, every time. It is from one competition to another. Life is not a place of competition. It's not a race. So it is not something to run about. 
The unfortunate thing is that many people are running, but they are running with an empty hand. They have nothing. They said, I can run very fast. So they are running. They are sliding others in order to go ahead. But they have nothing to offer where they are going. Because they consider it to be a race, they are trying to pull others down so that they can overtake. For some, life is a battle. And it is from one fight to the other. Fighting, fighting, fighting. They fight everybody. And uh, they carry the survivor of the fittest mentality. Because they see life as a battle. And a battle they must fought and won in every area. But life is a journey. Life is a journey. There is a starting point. And uh, there is a process that each person must go through. There is a place uh, where God wants us to get to. It is a place of destiny, fulfilling of purpose. And for each and every one, because it is a journey, we are traveling on different roads, on different routes, and by different means. And so each one who knows that life is a journey will find what is necessary for the journey of life and they, they, they put it along, they carry it along for each one to succeed in life. You must understand the process because if you are going through a journey, there is a process. You must develop a right attitude. You must remain focused. You must be disciplined to advance in life. Now, the combination of things that you carry determine how soon you get to your destination. In the journey of life, every decision and action counts because they have a consequences. Uh, you know, because while decisions are momentary, co their consequences can be, you know, eternal. Whatever decision that you take along the way has a consequence. We decide, we determine what happened to us by the thing, by the decisions we make in life. We determine what happened in our life by the actions we take in life. When you take the right step, you will end up at the right destination. When your steps are wrong, something go wrong, everything go wrong. In life. That was the case with Esau. Who couldn't discipline his stomach. And as a result of one plate of meal. He lost his place in destiny. Because someone who valued his destiny saw it. He couldn't see it. He asked himself. Of what benefit is this bat right? At the time he was trading it out. He couldn't see the value. So many people in our world today, they are trading away their value without seeing what it, should, it will get into their life. But for, for him, at the time he realized what he has lost, what he has exchanged, the Bible says he cries bitterly and there was no way, more room. Whatever it is that will cause you eternal sorrow, May God never allow you to take such step in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Reuben could not control his erection. And as a result of that, he inherited a generational cause. Unknowing to Reuben, if you can't control your erection, you will lose your direction in life. <laughs> Many people in our generation are missing it because they can't control but God has given it to you to control. It is natural for you to have erection. But it, discipline demands that you will put it under control if you want to maintain your direction in life. Gehazi missed the greatest opportunity in life to be the greatest prophet of the time <laughs> when he made the wrong choice of uh, the things of now. And then... He lived the, the rest of his life in regret. My prayer for you is that God will guide your choice in life. Amen. Each one of us, every day of our life, there is a, a choice that we make. 
Some as a little. Some as a great choices. For you to be in this service is a choice. You have a choice to be somewhere else. There may be something else that demands your attention somewhere else. But you have chosen to be here. And the consequence of that is that the blessing of God will meet you here. The hand of God will give you a push forward. The mighty hands of God will elevate you. And take you to the place of uncommon blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. You must mind your choice today. Because they determine whether you will fulfill purpose and destiny. Or whether your destiny will be truncated. Every step you need to take. Every opportunity that comes your way. Mind what you do with it. Because it determines. It goes a very long way. In determining where you are going. So when we say we, we move. The reasonable question we must ask ourselves is. To where? Or from where? We move to where? From where? One thing you also must get very clear in life. In life, we did not start from the same level. Life does not begin with everybody at the same level. Some people begin the journey of their life from the valley. Some start their own from the level ground. Some are born on the hill and the mountain. So we don't start at the same level. So when we say we move, we are not moving at the same pace. We are not moving from the same place. We are not moving into the same location. Where some people are moving to is where some people are now. Where some people are sparring that if I could ever get to this level, that is where some people are born. So to where? Or from where? There is a story of this young man who became born again and he saw this inscription. Jesus is the answer. And he decided to carry it and uh, engra uh, all his uh, clothes wearing it about Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. So one day, one, one confused person in his office called him, excuse me, sir, come. What is the question? If Jesus is the answer, what is the question? But unfortunate for that young man, he doesn't know the question. And because he did not know the question, they couldn't accept his answer. Because if you say this is the answer, we must know the question before we can agree. Jesus is the answer. And the question is, you know, is the answer to reach God. There is no anyone who can reach God. The only one who is a mediator, according to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, for there, is no, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only mediator. So when anybody wants to reconcile with God, the only answer is Jesus because he's the only mediator. When you talk about a savior, Jesus is the answer to salvation. How could a man be saved? Acts chapter 4 verse 12 tells us, For neither is there salvation in any other. You may argue it, you may debate it. You say, For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is only one name and that name is Jesus. Jesus is the answer to heaven. How do we make it to heaven? Many people want to make it, they want to go to heaven, but they don't know how to get there. You know, so Jesus is the answer. He said to us in John chapter 14 in verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Is the answer. You want to go to heaven. Jesus is the answer of eternity. Where eternity will be. Who gets eternity? Who is qualified to have eternity? Jesus is the answer. In John chapter 3, in verse 36, John 3, verse 36, he said, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. So, the answer is the answer to so many things. But until you get them right, you cannot spread it out. So, when we talk about movement, we move. There is one pertinent movement that every man must make 
in order to enjoy and experience the blessing of the Most High. It is the movement from sin to righteousness. Until you move from sin to righteousness, you can do anything. It is only at the low level. It, it doesn't go beyond that level. The praise that is acceptable, that would be blessed, is the one that comes from a righteous heart. So the first move everyone must make is out of sin unto righteousness. Every blessing declared, you know, is applicable to the righteous. It takes the righteous to receive the blessing that God has pronounced. In Psalm 37 in verse 25, Psalm 37 verse 25, the Bible says, I have been young and now old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. The righteous are never forsaken. Why? Psalm 34 verse 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto thy cries. So, when the righteous cry, God listen, he hacking unto them. Amen? Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 also corroborated that. He said, the, the, those who fear the Lord speak often one to another. He said, the Lord hacking and he hear them. And a book of remembrance is opened before them, before him, towards them. Amen? It takes the righteous to enjoy the blessing of the Lord. That's why Isaiah 59, verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hands are not shortened, that he cannot save, neither is he heavy, that he cannot hear. Now he says, It's your iniquity that has divided between you and your God. So God wants to bless if only you meet with the condition, with the criteria. Many people want the blessing, but they don't want to follow the route that God has laid down to get to the place of blessing. You must understand, you must follow the path of righteousness because that is the thing that will take you to where God wants to, to be. In Proverbs chapter 10, in verse 3, the word of the Lord says, The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. But he scattered away the substance of the wicked. In other words, God himself will not allow the sinner to gather. But he will not allow the righteous to be famished. Why? Psalm 7 verse 11 also says something in that line. It says, God ju judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. God is, is angry every day unto the, uh, against the wicked. Why? Because the sacrifice of a sinner man is an abomination unto God. According to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8. So, because the act of the sinner man is wicked, they're spiritually wicked, and anything that comes out of those wicked hearts are polluted, and so God is not interested. So there must be a move. A, a shift away. God does not hear sinner. And so we must understand that for us to get the blessing, we must do all that God decided requires of us. John chapter 9 verse 31 tells us, God never hears sinners, but he loves worshippers. But those worship must come out of a pure heart before they can be acceptable unto the most high. So you need Jesus in your heart for your life to face the right direction, for him to advance you, for him to take you. When God promised the children of Israel to take them to the promised land, they left Egypt and they were moving. And when they got to the border of the promised land, God said to Joshua, Something must be done before they enter. In Joshua chapter 5, as we read from verse 2 to 3, and God said, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives, and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knife, and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the first king. In other words, God said to them, circumcision before possession. 
Each one of us wants to possess what God has promised. But there is something that is the trigger that has to be pulled for that promise to, be, to, be, to manifest. God took them to the border, but he said, you, you are not going inside. There is something that we must settle here and now. And that is the issue of your circumcision. And so he circumcised them before they were taken in. If you read that Joshua chapter 5 in verse 1, the Bible tells us the news of the Israelites has spread to all the people. They were afraid. They were intimidated. They were afraid. They were given up already. But yet God said, you are not going inside. You are going to stay here and settle the matter. There are issues that each one of us must settle. And I tell you, tonight is a night of settlement. Just like Jacob has to settle issue with God in order for him to enter into his inheritance. God wants you to settle matter. What are those things you have swept under the carpet? What are the things you thought the eyes of man has not seen, but the eyes of God is seen and is witnessing against you? What is it that the devil is using against you day and night as you stand and as you pray? What is the thing that is pricking your mind that has to be settled? Tonight is a night of settlement. May God grant you grace to settle everything that must be settled so that you must receive everything that you must receive in the mighty name of Jesus. If you can pretend before man, you can pretend before God. Man may not see you, may not know what is in your heart, but God knows. He knows what is inside of your heart. And because he knows what is inside of your heart, he relates with you according to the position of your heart. What is the position of your heart? Right or wrong? Peter said to Simon the Sorcerer, he said, your heart is not right with God, so you have no part in this thing. There are many people who want it. They, they hear what God wants to do. They hear a lot of prophecies and pronouncements. And they re I receive it, I receive it. But there is something that is witnessing against you. Tonight is that night that you must settle everything that is trying to hold you back, that is trying to hold you down, that is trying to, you know, to stop the blessing of God, the rivers of God's blessing from flowing into your life until you are circumcised. You face with the anger of God. According to Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 4, it says, circumcise yourself to the Lord and take away the first skin of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evils of your doing. God take notes. God counts on what you do. And God pay. You need to understand that the wages of sin is dead. The fact that you are not physically dropped dead does not mean God is not faithful to his war. But God is giving you an opportunity to repent. Tonight, may you receive that grace to turn on the right path unto the Lord so that you can get everything that God has promised and is making available unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. So the blessing of God is flowing in your direction and you must do all within your power, within your ability to get it and to get yourself reconciled with the most high in the mighty name of Jesus. So when we say we move, it is a declaration of faith in God's word. Calling the things that be not as though they were. Now you are still in the same house you are living. You are still in the same business you are doing. You are still the same person that you are. But you are saying, we move. It is a declaration of faith. It is to say, I am tired of this level. I am moving to the next one. I have stayed in long at this place. I want to go to a higher place. And you need to understand that words are creative. They are very powerful. The word of God, God created everything by his word. According to Hebrew chapter 11 verse 3. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 3. He said, through faith we understand that the word were framed by the word of God. Everything we see, visible and invisible, they were 
the aftermath of the word of God. And because we are created in the image and in the likeness of God, there is power in our mouth. When you say it and you believe it, there shall be a performance and there shall be a manifestation. You may still be at the same level and you are saying we move. Now you are making a shift in the realm of the spirit. You are making a move from the spiritual corridor. You are moving yourself away from the place where anything will stop you. But I am believing God with you that your move, movement shall be holistic. Spiritually, there shall be a move. The cloud of glory will move in your favor. There shall be a move in your finance that things will change to your, in your favor. To the glory and to the praise of the name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. There shall be a move in your family to bring the kind of peace and tranquility that you ever desire into that family. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is going to be a move in the circle of your influence from no influence to a great influence god will take you in the mighty name of jesus if you believe it let your amen be better so if you go back to that judges 18 9 you know he said for we have seen the land and behold it is very good what can you see as you are making a declaration of we move what can you see can you see yourself out of your present predicament you don't need to calculate how it will happen leave out alone to god and let him let him work that one out what can you see and let's see you need to understand each time god asks question he give you, he paint a picture before you and then ask you a question. In Jeremiah chapter 1, as we read from verse 10 to 11, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10 to 11, he said, See, I have this day set thee over the nations. I don't know what position you think you are, but God is saying, from today you are set over nations. You are not just limited to this environment you are to take charge of nations nations are waiting for you to occupy nations are waiting for you to dominate nations are waiting for you to control everything that it takes for you to take your rightful place in the nation god pour over your life today in the mighty name of jesus he said an over kingdom to root out in other words to make violence change to pull down whatever things that is there that should not be to remove them and to destroy and to throw down to build god is giving you a new charge a new responsibility something that has to be put in place there are things structures and things that are supposed to be somewhere that are presently missing that god will want you to manifest, to begin to build and put in place. May you see it and may you manifest it in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. God is asking you, what can you see? You've been looking for job all about but can you see yourself becoming an employer of labor because the place that god is taking you to is not a place where somebody will employ you as a manager or whatever somewhere it is that you will be director directing many influences and be, be in control and in charge of many hey there is no no job around there is no job or there are works for people who are creative in their mind and in their imagination. May God touch your mind and touch your imagination and give you ideas that will begin to bring forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Where, what can you see? Where is God taking you to? When God was taking the children of Israel to the promised land, but be, because they were reluctant in the journey. God decided to paint the picture how the place he was taking them to looked like. 
I'm sure we have been talking about we move. You have not seen the picture. But let's look at the picture God painted for the children of Israel as, it, as they were taken to the promised land. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verse 7 to 10, he said, Deuteronomy 8, from 7 to 10, he said, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of waters, of fountain, and, of, and depths, and spring out of valley and hills, a land of wheat and barley, and vines and fig tree, and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stone are iron, and out of whose hill thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. There is a place that God is taking you to. It is a place where it will exceed your imagination. It will exceed your expectation. It will go beyond what you are looking for. You know, you are looking for iron. God says he will give you brass. He said the land will give you many fountains and many rivers. There shall be many fountains, there shall be many rivers. It is the fountains that turn to rivers. They start from a small piece, and little by little, they get widened up, and they become a great river. In this church, God is going to give you many mountains that will metamorphose into rivers. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this church, God will raise many that will take all the commerce of Nigeria, the commerce of Africa, the commerce of the whole world, in the mighty name of Jesus. Some people are going ahead, they are doing something. But I tell you, God wants to take you to the place where you will be the one in charge, you will be the one in control. It is not in vain that they said you shall be head and not tail. Beginning from today, as the Lord live and as the Spirit live, Everything that will give you the best of the law, may the Almighty God rest upon your life. May the Almighty God rest upon your life. Every fountain that God has designed to become a river that will bless many, may He spring for you. May He spring into your life in the name of Jesus. May every dryness around your life begin to receive the water of the Holy Ghost. May he begin to receive the water of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord who makes way, make a way for you. May the Lord who opened up, make open doors for you. May the one who have the master key, give it unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the power of the Most High manifest upon your life. May the grace and the glory of God begin to showcase over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. May your life never know dryness beginning from now. May your life never know dryness. May you swim in the abundance of God's blessing. May you swim in the abundance of God's favor. May you swim in the abundance of God's grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the power of the Almighty back you up and walk to your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. Because God is taking you to, to places. Now, a few things that you need to take note as you go on this journey. Very quickly as I round up. Number one, you must look up to God for a daily direction. You can't move on your own without being guided by the Lord. There is a place where God has ordained for you. And there is an angel that God has prepared to take you there. May you connect in Jesus' name. You must look inward for inspirations daily. Every day, there are things that want to discourage others. But you must find a, an encouragement every day. Look inward, look inward. There may be discouragement around you. But from inside of you, you must allow encouragements to come into your life every day. Totally. You must look around for opportunities every day because every day is a new opportunity. And so you must learn to look out for them. It is the one you look out for that you see. Many are passing by opportunity. You know, uh, and that is the reason why they are poor. It is said 
the real acronym of poverty is passing over opportunity repeatedly. So when you pass over opportunity repeatedly, you remain poor. So look out for opportunity. And as you look out for opportunity, you must keep your eyes open. You can't go on a journey with your eyes closed. You must keep your ears open. You must keep your mind open to information. You can't close your eyes. You can't close your ears. You can't close your mind. Because that determines how much you get and how much comes into your life. But God in all, in all of it, will give you the best that your life desires. I pray for you tonight. You will get it in Jesus' name. Your eyes will be open to opportunity. Your ears will be open to messages. You will remain inspired to get all that God wanted to give you. The direction you need in life to get to where God wants to take you. May you receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to just bow our, our head where we are for a, mo a, a moment. Just bow your head. The key into connecting into this blessing, it is in settling your matter with God. What is that case that you have to settle with the most high? I want you to talk to the Lord this hour. Settling that matter with God. Settling the matter with God. Now you are here, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You are excited, you are dancing, you are jumping. But you know yourself that you are still living in sin. But tonight you want to be delivered from the power of sin. I charge you and encourage you. Step out very quickly this night. My time is already all. Uh, let's just pray over it in one minute. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. You know it yourself. Sin will continue to truncate your destiny. Sin will continue to stop your blessing. But you want to say to God this day, Lord, I renounce sin and I take the path of righteousness wherever you are, from inside, from outside, up or down. Step out. Those of you who are uh, far from the, uh, from the altar, you know, if you have the mini altar around you, just minister there, identify. Let the people of God pray with you. Now, we have anyone who want to surrender your life to Jesus, you want to say to him, Jesus, I surrender my life. I settle my case of salvation. Let the blood of Jesus wash me. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse me. Let the blood of Jesus purify, purge me. Anyone coming at all so that you settle this matter once and for all. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We give you glory. We give you glory. The rest of us, can we please rise to our feet? Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Just one prayer that we're going to be praying. Say to him, Father. Father. Loud and clear, say, Father. Father. Everything standing on my way, trying to prevent me from getting what you have promised. Lord, I pray tonight, let the blood of Jesus settle them permanently. I renounce every trouble, every error, that is standing and hanging against me and i pray that in the mighty name of jesus lord let it be settled to the glory of your name let everything you desire for me come into my life come over my life let it reach out unto me in the mighty name of jesus i receive your grace to move into my portion and into my inheritance to the glory and to the praise of your name Thank you, awesome and excellent Father. To you be glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, I ask for your blessing upon this congregation. Lord, everything that must move, in order for them to move, to fulfill purpose, Father, let's all search, move now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever have been blocking their ways of blessing, by the authority of the Holy Ghost, I declare all such, move out of their ways in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask for the hands of your power to move each one into, into their purpose, into their destiny, 
into their portion, into their testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything you want in the life of each and every one of these your children. Let it manifest to the glory of your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. That none will lack a testimony to the glory and to the praise of your holy name. Thank you blessed father. To you alone be glory and honor and praise. As we continue father please continue with us. Fill us with your spirit. And as we send praises up, let your blessings be poured upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And the people of God will say a good amen. amen. Let me hear you praise the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. God bless you.